This is part two in a two-part revision resource on memory. To use this resource effectively, you will need to have already studied Memory in Everyday Life from the AQAA specification and have a set of detailed notes on research and concepts in this area. As this is an overview resource, you will need to revise the exact details of the procedures, findings and conclusions of studies separately. The specification states that you will need to learn about eyewitness testimony and the factors affecting the accuracy of eyewitness testimony. These include anxiety and age of the witness, although you can study others, misleading information and the use of the cognitive interview, and strategies for memory improvement. We'll start with a positive history of research in this area so you can see how it fits into psychology as a whole. One of the most important applications of memory research has been for eyewitness testimony. The key researcher in this area is Elizabeth Loftus. Loftus suggested from her research that people's memories of an event can be permanently changed by providing information after the event. The idea that people could be misled into remembering something that wasn't there is particularly of concern when you consider that people could be wrongly convicted based on this evidence. This led other researchers to investigate what else could affect the accuracy of eyewitness testimony. Using this research to understand eyewitness testimony accounts is one application of research into memory. The second application we looked at was memory strategies. There are a number of ways in which you can improve your memory and we studied a few of these. You need to make sure you're familiar with the terms misleading information, leading questions and post-event information. You also need to make sure you're familiar with the studies highlighted on the screen in front of you. Loftus 1975, Loftus and Zanni 1975 and Loftus and Palmer in 1974. Each of Loftus' studies showed that people could be misled by leading questions that seemed to suggest an answer or by information provided after the event. You will need to be able to evaluate these studies. One source of your evaluation could come from the fact that these are laboratory experiments and could be said to lack ecological validity. Witnessing a crime in real life could differ in a number of important ways from being a participant in Loftus' studies. In addition, Loftus suggested that the original memory is permanently changed by the misleading information. This has been questioned. Some critics have argued that in fact Loftus' findings might be the result of demand characteristics. So the small proportions of people who say that they saw something that wasn't there may in fact be trying to please the investigator. Loftus, however, tried to rule this out in an investigation where she offered a monetary reward to participants. You should look this up. One key strength of research in this area is the applications. The fact that we can use it to improve the accuracy of eyewitness testimony. Evidence into the effects of anxiety on eyewitness testimony are mixed in their findings. A number of studies suggest that anxiety enhances recall, whereas some studies suggest that it actually is detrimental to recall. You should make sure you know which studies show which findings and make sure you can evaluate these studies. Research has shown that children are often more willing to make a positive identification of a criminal, but that this is not always a correct identification. Children also seem to be more susceptible to the influence of leading questions and misleading information. Older children are able to consider where information provided after the event has come from and filter this out from original information. Young children, however, cannot. As children of three to four years can also have difficulty paying attention, this can make them unreliable witnesses. Clearly, the implication is that care should be taken when children are the sole witnesses to an event. Research also suggests elderly witnesses can be inaccurate and more likely to accept misleading information than middle-aged witnesses. Schemas can also influence the accuracy of eyewitness testimony. People tend to remember what they think will fit with their previous experience. List, for example, did an investigation where participants were more likely to recall events from a shoplifting scene if they were consistent with what they would expect to find at that scene. Knowing whether your recall will actually affect a real crime can also affect accuracy. Foster et al, for example, found that if participants were told that the video of the bank robbery they were watching was real and there could be a conviction based on it, they were more likely to be correct in their recall. Researchers also focused on individual differences and its effects on the accuracy of eyewitness testimony. 
You will also need to be able to evaluate these studies into eyewitness testimony. One way you could do this is by considering their methods, whether they're lab, field or natural experiments. You could also consider validity, ecological, population or internal validity. One way in which you could consider internal validity is by looking at the way that the variables have been operationalised. For example, in Christensen and Hubernet's study, anxiety was operationalised as being directly involved in the incident as opposed to being a bystander. This, however, may not be valid. As well as being directly involved and therefore more anxious, participants would also have been closer in proximity to the actual crime and therefore had a better view and perhaps that's why they recalled more correctly. You could also consider the reliability of research. If more than one study shows the same thing, it could be said to be reliable. Lastly, you could consider the applications of research. If the findings of the studies can be used beyond psychology, this could be a particular strength. The cognitive interview technique was developed based on research into eyewitness testimony and has four features. Make sure you know each of these four features and what they actually involve. Try not to describe them by simply using the terms in the feature repeatedly. You will need to familiarise yourself with evidence which supports the use of the cognitive interview technique and be able to analyse this evidence. Take a moment to have a look at the evaluative points on the screen in front of you. One strategy for improving memory is referred to as verbal mnemonics. This involves the use of rhymes or acronyms to try and make something more memorable. For example, in science, you may have learnt the acronym Richard of York gave battle in vain in order to remember the colours of the rainbow, or never eat shredded wheat to remember the compass points. Mnemonic techniques can also be based on visual imagery. The PEG word system, for example, involves taking 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on up to 10 in a list, taking a word that rhymes with that, so 1 is bun, 2 is shoe, 3 is tree, etc., and linking the information to be remembered in a visual way to each of those PEG words. So if the word to be remembered was animal, you would link bun for 1 and an animal and try and remember that visual image. The second visual mnemonic that we studied was called the method of loci. This involves taking a familiar route or journey and placing items to be remembered at logical points along that journey. That way when you try to recall, you recall the journey which is already in your long term memory or the route or the layout of a building, whatever happens to be familiar and then at various places you recall the items you placed there metaphorically. The idea is to link this in an interesting visual way so that this stands out to you. A simple method of improving memory is using chunking. If you look at the list of digits on the screen, you'll see this is too much for your short-term memory to cope with. However, if we arrange the same list like this in chunks, we can see these are the square numbers and it becomes much easier to recall this amount of information. The encoding specificity principle is the idea that items present at the time of learning will aid recall. Context-dependent retrieval is based on the principle that if you recall the information you've learnt in the same context as when you learnt it, this will aid recall by providing retrieval cues. If you have an exam, it's best to do your revision in the exam hall. However, this can work based on imagery. So if you're in an exam and you imagine that you're back at your desk at home revising, then items in the context in your imagination will also act as retrieval cues. Memory strategies can also be based on principles of organisation and linking to information in your long-term memory. You could do this by creating a schema for the information you have to recall, creating a hierarchy or putting the information into meaningful categories. You will need to be able to identify how each strategy might work. Some of the strategies work by encoding the information twice. So visual mnemonics, for example, might involve visual encoding and acoustic encoding. This should strengthen the memory trace and increase the likelihood that it will be recalled. Some strategies based on linking information to items already in your long-term memory. Some strategies work by creating retrieval cues. 
make sure you spell Q correctly as it's different to forming a Q. You will need to be able to analyse the strategies. One way you could do this is by considering the questions on the screen in front of you. Are they based on evidence? Is this evidence sound and valid? Can anyone use these strategies? Are they practical or do they need any special training? And finally, are they suitable for all types of information? Take a moment to have a look at the summary points on the screen in front of you. We've considered the whole of memory in everyday life, including eyewitness testimony and memory strategies. You will need to make sure that you review the procedures, findings and conclusions of all the studies highlighted in this area.